Hi everyone, thank you so much for making the time to join us uh, in these catch-up recordings. I hope you were all uh, you all enjoyed the API Days session in Paris last week. So in terms of our talk today, we're here to take you through how a modern integration strategy requires implementing modern tooling and breaking down departmental barriers across your organization. Quick round of introductions. My name is Grace Brody. I am the EMEA sales lead here at Trader.io and I've been working in client facing roles within startups and scale ups for about 13 years or so now. The last two have been spent with Trey where I'm focused on partnering with customers to explore and build out their integration strategies at scale. And hi, bonjour. I'm Alex Cox and I lead our customer engineering function here at Trey. So I've been with Trey for over five years now in various roles covering engineering, customer implementations, and solution architecture. Right now, I'm responsible for ensuring that we offer optimal connectivity between our platform and the APIs our customers require. And in case anyone doesn't know, Trey itself is an AI-powered enterprise, low and no-code iPaaS tool for building integrations with APIs. So let's get going. It's undeniable that integration is fundamental to a digital transformation strategy. For those of you that are listening in, I appreciate some of you might already have an iPaaS tool in place, and there might be some of you that are also looking to the market and evaluating a potential iPaaS partner. For those of you already with an iPaaS in place, some of the statements that you'll see here will feel like key benefits that likely resonate with you. And for those of you that are in the process of still carrying out an evaluation, we would recommend that these are some of the key themes and benefits that you should keep your eye on, and they'll help you to build out a strong value case to support your investment. Put simply, if tools within your tech stack are better connected, it's going to start to unlock a whole host of new possibilities for you. When silos start to get broken down, there's tremendous amounts of benefits. Your tools are great at what they do individually, but when you start to have this and that connected and connected in a way that provides greater flexibility to do exactly what you wish, that's gonna be a lot more powerful and it's gonna drive real results. It's gonna help you to lower your overall operating costs. If your employees are spending less time manually moving data between different systems, employee productivity is gonna be elevated. The data that you're using across your organization is going to be a lot richer, a lot more reliable, which is ultimately gonna help improve your decision-making. And for businesses that offer cloud-based applications and products, by offering a broader array of customer activated integrations to your end customers' third-party applications will make for a much more enriching customer experience. That's all fine and well, but the challenge is, is that up until quite recently, the integration tooling that was around wasn't really designed to keep pace. With the deployability of cloud solutions, business teams being able to select and deploy and implement more applications, we've witnessed a significant proliferation. Industry estimates have it that the number of apps in an enterprise tech stack has increased by around about 25% in the last five years. But at Trade, we actually think that's quite a conservative estimate. And often when we're working with prospects, we're seeing an average of around about 30 applications per department in broader enterprises. This is a huge amount to integrate with, and you can't really get there working just with developers and integration specialists alone. They're in incredibly short supply and very expensive. Um, with integration IT requests going up and up, and in some orga organizations that we're working with, we've seen as much as a 10x growth. Behind every automation initiative, there's integration work that needs to be done, and it can be super manual and really time consuming. And simply in this scenario, in this situation, developer, he developer heavy tools just are not the solution. Another texture to this is that for businesses that offer cloud-based applications, see significant losses in revenue by not responding to their end customers' integration requests. In some scenarios, the technical burden of building custom integrations on behalf of customers can be pushed actually onto the end customers themselves, and that can be not a particularly great experience for them. So, Integration software that up until recently has often been used is just not designed for the scale and agility that we need going forwards. So let's look at those critical gaps in existing tooling. There are citizen development tools like Zapier or Power Automate. Now they're quick to use, but they don't have the governance, the observability, the lifecycle management or the reusability. And they lack role-based access control or even just the scalability. So ultimately, they're a dead end if you want to deploy at scale, let's say in the hundreds of integrations. 
most IPaaS tools that were designed way back. Some of them are 20 year old code bases um, and they're only usable by integration specialists. The builder experience is often way too complicated for democratized delivery and often they're not designed for collaborative development. Thirdly, API management tools are just too heavyweight for most integrations. In some cases, they provide a low code UX on top, but ultimately it's so limited in terms of business logic that teams are forced to default back to code. And finally, the RPA tools, um, which means user experience scripting. They seem attractive at first, but integrations and automation dependent on user experiences versus APIs, APIs are not robust. The UIs often change and then you have to change your scripts. So in order to accelerate the pace of building new integrations, we see the use of composable elements in an AI augmented low code building environment being the key ingredients for success. While a serverless compute architecture enables elastic scalability to meet the ever growing integration needs. Composable elements foster collaboration while reducing the inefficiencies caused by duplicated efforts across silo departments. In addition, when centrally governed, these can be a major advantage in terms of governance and security. AI augmentation of building environments reduces the time required to learn and understand new platforms and APIs. This and low code in general also contributes to further allowing non-developers to build and maintain integrations. And this really is helping blur the lines between no and low code. So this modernization requires new thinking. And here are some internal strategies that we would recommend companies adopt when considering the overall modernization of their integration strategy. We're in an environment where organizations are looking to consolidate and use fewer tools with more unified capability. You can't have individuals and teams working in silos. Modern integration truly is a team sport. You want people to work together from your analysts, app admins, ops, developers, technologists, frontline business teams. You need all of your talent to work productively together to tackle integration and automation. The growth in APIs is brilliant, as we saw over the course of some of the brilliant talks across the API Days event in Paris last week. This opens up a whole host of new opportunities, of course, but the double-edged sword here is, is that it also has the potential to create future technical debt around integrations, especially if your integration strategy isn't centrally governed and if, if individuals in your organization are individually building separate point-to-point -point API integrations, it can make for quite a rogue and disconnected approach. If that individual that has built out a certain point-to-point -point integration then leaves the organization, suddenly the team that benefit from it can find themselves in a bit of a sticky situation. The new way is to provide standardized connectivity that insulates teams from this kind of change. With automation being further adopted by front lines, and we'll go on to talk about this in, in a little moment, old school apps that aren't enterprise grade and that don't provide modern governance or different builder experiences, depending upon who is building out the integration, just won't cut it. Your growth truly has to be frictionless on every dimension. And we aren't alone in thinking in this way. This is a quick snapshot um, from a recent Gartner report that precedes integration maturity. And you can see that some of the key themes we've highlighted in terms of collaboration, democratization, and enabling multiple personas to build integration really is key. So here's what you should be considering as part of your organizational integration culture. Fast, powerful, and unified automation, integration, and connectivity experiences provided by those fast, composable experiences, um, the universal capabilities so that everyone in the organization can, can get involved in building and maintaining those integrations, and governance at scale so that you can use this across your enterprise. Whether you're a software engineer looking to add integrations to your customer experience app, a technologist in finance looking to integrate orders to cash, or perhaps a marketing manager who quickly wants to pull together a report. We want every team to be able to reuse and collaborate. So for example, you know, to tackle large scale RevOps automations. Universal capabilities are necessary, 
because organizations are drowning in separate tools, the process automation, data integration, and hand-grown integrations with their customers. And each of these use cases is often part of a longer chain. Given their interconnected nature, they often benefit from strong collaboration during scoping and development. Composable elements can allow workflows to share components, reducing the development time and maintenance burden. Now, on top of these use cases outlined here, of course, now with LLM applications, there are further opportunities for enterprises to design custom models and streamline human in the middle processes. And here's a quick snapshot of some of the benefits of adopting and embracing these modern approaches to building integration and automation. DocuSign were able to significantly cut the time that it takes for leads to get routed to their account executives, making for happier prospects, shorter sales cycles, quicker wins. Mixpanel were able to spin up a, a much more agile order to cash process. Pedal reduced the time that their staff were spending on manual data entry by 30%. Vox were able to onboard customers up to 20 times faster, again, making for much more happier customers. Internal teams got a lot more time back, which meant that they had capacity to launch new, many more new client projects simultaneously. And Airbnb were able to significantly um, impact uh, their overall project velocity. And then from the perspective of businesses that offer cloud-based applications and products, it's clear that the big players invest in integrations because the revenue return is clear. Companies that are integrating your solution deeply into their tech stack will realize much more value and be much less likely to churn. We've seen that as few as two active integrations can improve retention by 14% and provide up to 13.5% higher MRR from the customers that are using them. And the value of integration scales considerably as companies with five or more integrations have 36 higher, 36 percent higher retention rates and up to 35% uplift in MRR. So let's double tap into that Airbnb story. They face techn technical challenges in building out new billing systems in new business units and geographies. So traditionally, the travel leader had used the payment processing solution Stripe in tandem with its company-wide customer relationship management solutions, Salesforce. However, to process payments and customer data in a timely manner, they needed to make use of a new system of records, HubSpot CRM. And all this while keeping that new CRM's data synced with the company's institutional stack components of Salesforce and Stripe. While doing this, they faced many of the challenges that we've spoken about, a scarcity of developers within the organization and an older iPaaS solution that was blocking progress and existing processes that were difficult to maintain. Some of the highlights from their implementation of a modern replacement are that their business units are now able to entirely manage their own payment processing systems while remaining integrated with the enterprise stack. They connect Stripe with their evolving tech stack to manage new account creation and, rec and record customer chargebacks. This, in turn, opens the door to a variety of use cases for event logic and product usage data to accelerate customer issue resolution and drive additional revenues. Another interesting customer story is that of NICE. They are an enterprise customer relations management software with over 27,000 end customers across 150 countries. Put simply, they did not have the capacity to respond to all of the integration requests that were coming from their customer community. This was having a significant impact on their overall customer experience. It was compromising their internal engineering resource. And they were looking for a solution that would enable them to be able to quickly build deploy and maintain customer integrations at scale. They were looking for a solution that would either enable them to be able to build out rapid one-off custom integrations that could be spun up by their engineering and development team, or perhaps even also done by folks in their product team. Some of the highlights of them upgrading their tooling and implementing a versatile low-code iPaaS 
meant that they were able to significantly speed up the time that it took for them to build. They, off the back of a, an extensive proof of concept phase, they were able to build out a low code master workflow for their integrations. We knew that they could build this once and then deploy this solution to their integration marketplace. This seamlessly integrated with their core product and it meant that their end users were just able to simply authenticate and activate integrations between their instances of Microsoft Dynamics, Salesforce, ServiceNow, Zendesk, and NICE. So now all of their customers, whether they're big or small, can be serviced by a much smaller and much more agile dev team, avoiding millions of dollars worth of engineering effort and maintenance. These engineering folks were also then able, they were then freed up and they were able to be redeployed on core product work. And also it meant that due to the builder experience that was offered in the tool, the engineering team could share the load of building out integrations with their product team as well. We referenced this a little bit earlier on in the talk, but um, do feel free to head over to trade.io where you'll be able to access a complimentary copy of the latest Gartner integration maturity report. There's certainly some uh, much really deep insight into this much deeper than we could go into in the time that we've had in the talk today. Um, but hopefully for those of you that are still in the process of evaluating the market for an IPAS partner, there'll be some key themes and, and helpful, uh, helpful bits of info in here to support you. Thank you so much for listening. It's been a pleasure and please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you've got any questions in relation to any of the content that you saw throughout this presentation or indeed that you saw when you came to see us at API Days last week. We'd be delighted to help. Thank you very much. Thank you.